Hey guys, how's it going? It's Luke, back again for another ownership reaction, this time for the 3M Open and for the DraftKings contest this weekend. My goal of this video is to help identify some of the golfers being overhyped going into the event. Those are going to be my top three fades, as well as some of the guys being a little bit overlooked that I think have a really good shot of competing this weekend. Those are going to be my sleeper picks. As always, I will be implementing a data-based approach to sort through the option, give you guys the players with the best probability of making a cut and also getting it getting through to the weekend. I'm going to be using mathematical modeling and visualization techniques that I've learned as an engineer that I've been able to translate to the DS, DFS sphere to help simplify lineup making and to help you guys be more profitable with your lineups. Um, on top of my video content, I do have a Patreon page as well where I have all of my projections for all 153 players in this week's field. I also have my ownership projections on there, some game theory notes, whether they're in my player pool or not. Um, you also get access to ask me any questions you guys would like, all that kind of stuff. So make sure to check it out. The link is in my description. It's only a dollar for the month. So you get access to um, four weeks of PGA Tour events, all the projections. Um, so I definitely think it's well worth the money. Um, without further, further delay though, let's hop into my top fades and sleeper picks. Now kicking off my fades, at number three we have Robert McIntyre, a $9,000 priced golfer who's expected to be owned in about 15% of lineups here on DraftKings, depending on what contest you enter. Um, Robbie Mack, um, he's my first fade, but it's just hard, it's a hard one to swallow for me because I think he has a lot of potential. I think he's going to be a superstar at some point on the PGA Tour, on the international scene as well. Uh, the real concern for me this week is his course fit at TBC Twin Cities. He's somebody who has trouble hitting fairways. He's hitting just 51% of them over his last 28 measured rounds. He's also somebody who is lost in approach and putting over those last 28 rounds as well. I've seen him four or five times over the last few months on the PGA Tour. He's yet to really make a splash. He made a splash at the Open last week with a top 10 finish. A lot of that had to do with his round the green play. He also putted lights out. Uh, I just don't think that the American game is really suited for him at this point. He obviously grew up in Scotland. He's played a lot of European tour golf. He's had a lot of success on European tour events. But what he's going to see at the 3M Open this week is just a little bit different. Uh, the greens are going to run three or four um, paces faster on the on the stint meter. They're also going to be much firmer than he's used to seeing at a typical PGA, um, sorry, European tour event. Um, so as a result, at 15% ownership, I just think it's a little bit inflated. If it was closer to 4 or 5%, I think he'd be worth a shot or two. Uh, but you really have to invest in him at that number, and that's why he's a fade for me at number three. At number two for my fades, we have Matthew Wolf, a $9,700 golfer expected to be owned in about 20% of lineups depending on what contest you enter. Um, this is another hard fade for me. He's somebody that is one of my favorite golfers in the world. I give him a lot of respect for taking some time away from the game, getting his head right. Uh, but it's really the same issues for Wolf that I have with McIntyre. It's the driving accuracy. He's hitting just 50.5% of fairways over the last 28 measured rounds. And on top of the missing uh, the short grass, he hasn't been great with his putter. He's been losing a few strokes with the putter over the same stretch. He's also been losing with his iron. So it's pretty hard to play somebody who over the last seven events hasn't been playing well. The really only good stretch of golf that he had was at the U.S. Open. And that's a golf course that fits exactly his skill set. You know, somebody you can bomb and gouge, hit wedges into greens, even if you're in the rough. Um, and at a course like the 3M Open, where you need to be precise, um, when he had all the success back in 2019, I believe it was, when he ended up winning the event, he led the field in shots gained approach. He's nowhere near that type of ball striker at this point. He's clearly going through some swing changes. And for me, he's a fade, even though he's one of my favorite players in the world. He's just owned at 20%. That's well too much. You have to invest in him at like 40, 50% for that to pay off, and that's just too high. And now we're going to number one for my fades. We have Louis Oosthuizen, a $10,900 golfer expected to be owned in 17% of DraftKings lineups. He's somebody who heads to Blaine, Michigan. I'm sorry, not Michigan, Minnesota. After the absolute blow up at the Open Championship, he's certainly going to be tired mentally. I mean, he talked about it even before the round, you know, hoping to actually come through with a win, not finish second or third again. I'm um, off. Again, had the meltdown, and uh, the concern doesn't just, it's not just mental for me with Louis, it's, a lot of it has to do with his putting on bent grass as well. He averages negative .49 strokes per round on bent grass based um, when you compare it to his normal putting splits, 
and he's going to be putting on greens that are so much different than what he saw last week at the Open Championship. The greens at the Open were running at about a 9 or a 10 on the stint meter. This week you're going to see the normal 12 and a half, 13 for a PGA Tour event. And I think he's going to be a huge adjustment he's going to have to make. Uh, it's a, just a different type of golf as well. It's more of a bomb and gouge, be very precise with your wedges kind of golf course. And uh, that's not the kind of course it was at the Open Championship. It was much more of a bump and run. You were hitting a lot of punch shots. I think there's going to be a lot of adjustment there as well. And uh, at 17% ownership, he's a fade for me because I'd much rather play someone like DJ, Finau, Patrick Reed. I'd even rather spin down um, into the $9,000 range and start there if I had to. So um, he's a fade for me. It's just uh, I'd much rather prefer him at a hard, harder golf course. And now for my sleeper picks. At number three, we have Mito Pereira, a $7,600 golfer who's expected to be owned in just about 1% of lineups. So not many people are going to going to Pereira. I think a lot of that has to do with his price, even in a field like this. But even in a small sample size, Pereira has been absolutely killing it, arguably one of the best players over the last 28 rounds. He's getting 1.7 strokes tee to green over that stretch, and he was able to take advantage of that last week at the Barbasol with a top five finish. At the 3M Open, you're looking for people that can be precise off the tee, also put themselves in good scoring opportunities, and people that can be good with their iron play. Um, over the last 20 rounds, we don't have a full 28 for Mito. He has been great on approach. He has been averaging 0.51 strokes on approach per round. Um, that is more than enough to get it done at a course like the 3M Open. The only real liability that Prayer has is the putter. He's been losing with the putter. Um, obviously, that's not ideal, but if he can gain or even shoot neutral with this putter this week, he could very well contend or even win this golf tournament. He's won three times on the Corn Ferry Tour this year. This is just his third PGA Tour start, um, but winning on the Corn Ferry Tour is nothing to scoff at. Um, it's just like winning for people in college on the collegiate level. It's very impressive. Um, winning in its own right is impressive because you have to be able to deal with the pressure. You have to know how to win, how to deal with the mental gymnastics of going for um, extending a lead, holding on to a lead, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so that's great to see. I not, I'm not going to be betting him this week or anything like that. It's obviously very volatile because of the lack of a solid putter. But I think in terms of a GPP play, in terms of entering 150 lineups, he's definitely worth investing in three or four of those lineups. Again, you'll get plenty of leverage at that point. You're at like the three or four percent mark, depending on how many of those 150 lineups you enter. And uh, for me, I think it's a very good leverage play in the mid $7,000 range. And number two, we have Gary Woodland, who was one of my, argue, somebody I argued for a core play this week, um, priced at $8,000 and expected to be owned in just 4% of lineups. He's not somebody I thought would be a sleeper pay play at the beginning of the week. Obviously, he has a lot of name recognition. A lot of the casuals that play PGA DFS will go to somebody like Gary Woodland. And he's somebody who's been anything but super impressive. He doesn't have very many good finishes, especially of late. I mean, caught fire about a month ago for an event or two. Um, but even during that um, lack of great play, he's been very, very solid on approach, getting 0.59 strokes per round on approach. And he's also been somebody who's very good on bent grass in terms of his putting. He's 0.2 strokes better per round on the bent grass surface. Um, if he could putt to the same level he did at the Open Championship or even the Wells Fargo Championship a couple months ago, he has a very good chance to contend. You know, he's somebody who's going to give himself plenty of opportunities. He has the length to take advantage of the par fives, and he has that familiarity with the bent grass surface. So. Um, I expect a little bit of a rebound for him, especially after last week's debacle. Um, and if he, again, if he can put anything like he did at the Wells Fargo Championship, he could very well win this week. At number one for my sleeper picks, we have Sergio Garcia, a $9,900 golfer expected to be owned in 10% of lineups. He's somebody that I'm not super bullish on this week, not somebody I'm going to be playing in any substantial amount. Uh, but I definitely think he has the wild card or the chance to come through for a win. Um, somebody I would be willing to put an outright bet on. I wouldn't bet on like top five or top 10 or anything like that. I think he's the kind of guy who's either gonna miss the cut or he's gonna come out and potentially contend to win. Um, he's somebody who's very precise off the tee, very long off the tee as well. Um, it's very rare to see Sergio Garcia miss a fairway. He's obviously one of the best iron players in the world as well. Um, Colin Morikawa is better, I'd say Sergio Garcia is better. Um, Wills Altoris is a better iron player, um, Victor Hovland. And, and then that's probably it. He's probably number five or six right there. Um, he's also done very well at a comp course for this. So a lot of people are comparing Twin Cities to Sawgrass, TPC Sawgrass, that is. And uh, if you guys remember, Sergio went out and shot seven under the first day of the Players' Championship. Um, I actually followed him that day. I was at the event. 
Uh, he did not hit a bad shot the entire day. He, he has the perfect game for this type of venue where there's a lot of water. You have to keep it straight in the fairway, and you also have to be very precise with your irons. I, uh, it's just very eerie to me, especially the comparisons. You know, The more I think about it, especially being at the event, it makes perfect sense why he did so well there. Um, he obviously needs the putter to cooperate. Uh, the only reason he didn't win that player's championship is days two through four, he lost a ton of strokes with his putter. I believe it was like four or five strokes over those two days. He gained like three strokes the first day, so it didn't look horrible by the end of the tournament. Um, but if he can hold it together, you know, for a day or two um, this weekend at Twin Cities, he could contend or even win the golf tournament. Um, he's somebody who, again, I I'm considering putting an outright bet on. I'm not going to have him in a ton of my DFS lineups because he has that putter volatility, but he's definitely somebody that you should play just in case he captures that upside. I'm talking like, you know, 15 to 20 percent of your lineups. He's uh, he's very volatile. That's the state of his game by design, I would say. He, he has a very volatile game to go out and win a lot of golf tournaments, but he's also going to mix that up with a lot of missed cuts. So keep that in mind. Um, that's why he's my number one sleeper. That's all for my ownership reaction video, guys. Let me know in the comments who your favorite sleeper pick is this week for a chance to win a free month of my PGA projections. I'm also going to have videos covering the UFC fights out for this weekend out later on today. Also later this week, I'll have a video on my top quarterbacks for fantasy football, as well as a video covering my $25,000 win on Golf DFS. I won that for the Mayakoba Classic. Uh, There's a, a tournament I did, a, I believe it was a blog for, it wasn't a video for. So we're gonna do an analysis of some of the research I was doing, some of the lineups I entered, obviously the winning lineup as well, to help give you guys an idea of how to take down the GVP, the kind of mindset I had to try and take it down all that kind of fun stuff. Um, it's gonna be one of the harder videos for me to produce. It's a little bit different than what I'm used to doing. Um, so it's gonna take a little bit longer, but stay tuned for that. I think it's gonna be very informational, something you guys love to see. Um, thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you guys enjoyed the content. It really helps me out. And it also makes sure you guys can catch it as soon as I post it. So it's a win-win right there. Um, also good luck with your guys' lineups this weekend. Uh, I know you guys are gonna be crunching those lineups tonight. Um, let me know in the comments if you guys have any questions. Of course, you guys can join my Patreon page as well um, to ask any questions. Um, without further ado, good luck, and I'll see you guys next time.